praise the Lord. Father, we appreciate, we give you praise for a time such as this. We thank you for you are the Lord, you change it not. You will never share your glory with anyone. We appreciate you, Lord, for what you continue to do in our life and for the gift of this new day. Father, teach us by your spirit, teach us in your love. May your light bring to bear everything that has been made obscured in our life and grant us purpose, vision, and something to live for daily. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Yes, we give God glory. It's another day. And today we are going to be looking at waiting for God to act. Waiting for God to act. Waiting for God to act. And to help us in that conversation, we'll be taking a reading from Psalm 62, verse 1 and verse 5. Psalm 62, verse 1 and verse 5. He said, I wait quietly before God, for my victory comes from Him. He said, let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in Him. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in Him. Now, this scripture is uh, a very uh, reassuring scripture, and the scripture that talks about uh, the psalmist uh, disposition about waiting on the Lord waiting for God to act and it does speak to the faith that the psalmist has in his God and understanding that his victory comes from him. Hallelujah. Yet we would all agree that we are frustrated many a times. Yes, many a times. Because in some instances, we have been expectant again, over and over again for some things that we are looking up to God for. In short, oftentimes what we are asking seems not to be obviously out of taste or not in, in you know, it's in tandem with God's will at least. We are not acting against what God has asked and commanded of us. So we wonder why we have to wait. It's frustrating. Hallelujah. Consider a child that has a goal ahead of them. Maybe you're moving into a new apartment. And you know that anxiety, that wait. Every day they are checking off the calendar. You know, they want to understand how long more they need to wait. It's, it's an exciting experience. And at the same time, it could seem very frustrating. And the question is, how and what do we do when we are dealing with all of this wait time, dealing with this old challenge of when will I be able to get this thing, you know, on me? Uh, when we are restless, when we are agitated, and yet we want to trust fully in God's timing. So the first thing to remember is that to wait on the Lord is to remember that name, waiter, in our restaurants, hotels, and all of that. The wait tables. So what do they do when they are waiting on you? They serve. And of course, the quality of service and of course, the kind of person they are serving will determine the kind of appreciation they get at the end. Waiting strategically, therefore, means service. So while we are waiting for God to act, we serve. We serve out the time. We serve at His BS. Why? Because, you see, God saved us. And He hears our cries. Yes, Micah 7 verse 7 tells us this much. And you see, in Romans 8 verse 32, He said, he who did not spare his own son but gave it up for gave him up for us, how will he not also graciously give us all things? So you need to cultivate the habit, the art of service. 
while waiting. Why? Because when you wait on the Lord at the place of service, you will understand that this God is one that diligently, you know, gives and provides for all that trust in him. So serving at God's table while waiting for him to heart is putting your hope in his word. Hallelujah. It is you saying, I trust in you, O Lord, not in my understanding. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. It is you resisting, fretting, reframing from anger. You are trying to be still and choosing patience. And interestingly, my friends, it is you being strong and taking courage in the Lord. You see, every opportunity to serve is an opportunity to experience God's goodness because that waiter, having served at the table, often gets a reward for the service. So why not wait for God's promise instead of going on your own, your own way? Hallelujah. Why not wait on God? For when we wait on Him, we will never be disappointed. So, let's continue steadfastly in prayer. Let's stay watchful with thanksgiving. And remember that God's blessings, though they tarry, Scripture says, it shall surely come to pass because all things work together for good. To them that love God, for those who are called according to His purpose. So are you called according to His purpose? Have you set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth? If Jesus is at the center of your life, he, he, then you are set on that journey. If He's not at the center of your heart, you should not be ashamed. Pick up the phone, call the numbers on the screen. Someone will be there to speak to you, to pray with you work with you so that together we can walk with this Eden. Jesus, this Eden gold miners are waiting for us. God bless you. Amen.